Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the construction update meeting for site 43 ESE2, an elementary school in Lake Nona that will be named very soon. A few housekeeping notes about how this meeting will work. Attendees are automatically muted with cameras off. Please use the Q&A tool to ask questions and you can see the instructions on your screen. You can ask questions at any time, but we may not get to address your question until the Q&A portion at the end after the presentation. The chat is available as a backup, but please try to use the uh, Q&A portion. If you could please advance the slide, Branson. The video icons that you see are panelists who are available to answer questions today. I will be introducing them shortly. If you have any technical issues, you can reach WebEx support at 1-866-229-3239 and then extension 2 and extension 1. I've also added this phone number into the chat. Uh, if you could please advance the slide. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the OCPS Facilities Communications YouTube page as well as sent out as a link to anyone who registered for the meeting. The presentation slides will also be posted tomorrow at facilities.ocps.net and posted on board member Johanna Lopez's page at ocps.net under school board. But before we get started, let's turn to your district two board member Johanna Lopez for welcome remarks. SG2 40% construction meeting. I am so excited. I'm so excited tonight because we're going to have this presentation and I know that we're going to have another wonderful school at Lake Nona. Today we're going to also meet our principal, that is Dr. Vasquez, that I am so excited to hear from her as well. And also so excited from the questions and, and see what else are we going to have in this new school. Thank you for coming and thank you for well, thank you for tuning us. I'm just trying to be <laughs> traditional, but we're still in virtual um, in this virtual presentation. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you, Board Member Lopez. Everything's a little bit different this way, right? <laughs> it is different. <laughs> So um, OCPS, as well as the design and construction teams for this project have sent representatives who can answer questions today. So uh, I saw we have principal Dr. Aleli Vasquez Santiago is here. Um, we do also have representatives from Feeder School Laureate Park Elementary School here, Principal Workham and AP Ramsey. Uh, the architect for this project is Chris is uh, Rhodes and Brito and representing Rhodes and Brito today. We have Chris Kowalski, who you'll hear from a little bit later. Um, the civil engineer is Klima Weeks and Jay Klima is here representing them. The construction, uh, the construction team for this project is Pertle Construction. And we have quite a number of representatives from Pirtle here today, because since this is the 40% construction meeting, this meeting is really all about the construction of this new school. So from Pirtle, we have Jatin Amin, Branson Fitzpatrick, Ken Martinez, and Richard Rodriguez. So thank you everyone for being here. Now from the OCPS facilities team, um, I'm, I'm the communications person from OCPS. And we have uh, the Facilities Director for Construction Planning, Jessma Lambert is here. From Facilities Planning, which is a, a different sub-department, we have Christopher Mills. Um, Senior Facilities Executive Director, Rory Salambeen. We have our, pro our Project Management Team Project Manager, say that three times fast, uh, Rob Stagliano is here. And what he does is he serves as an intermediary between OCPS and the uh, the construction team to make sure that the school is built to proper specifications. So he's along to answer any questions. Um, also from OCPS, we have uh, Commander Randy Durkee from OCPS Police. Uh, from Transportation, we have Adam Zabritsky. From the Office of the Fire Marshal, uh, we have Richard Kirkham. And if I've missed anybody, I will catch them uh, when I come back on a bit later. But now I'm gonna hand things over to Principal Vasquez, um, who's gonna tell us about the school naming. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Well, good evening, everyone. As Lauren says, my name is Dr. Alali Vasquez, and I am extremely excited about this amazing opportunity of being the principal of this amazing school in the Lake Nona community. So I am looking forward 
to working along with the community and getting to know every single one of the families that will be attending our amazing school that does not have a name yet, but we're working on that. So a survey was sent out. I shared and I've been in communication with Principal McClaw from Eagle Creek Elementary and also Principal Workham from Laureate Park Elementary. And I know that they shared with the families the link to the survey of the school naming process as well as social media. So the school naming process works this way. We have a survey that it's out there already. We've already had quite a few um, votings and we put out there for you. We want to hear from the community and make you part of this decision process of the school name, the school colors and the mascot. So the school name, this is how it works. We are going to go over the names that were submitted by the community. Chose, choose the top three names and those top three names will be submitted to the school board and the school board will determine the official name of the school. So the survey link is in the slide and it's also on social media and you have until March 4th at 5 p.m. to vote. And after that, we have a committee that will meet to go over the process and look at the survey to select the top three names and submit those top three names to the board for final approval. So our goal is hopefully that by March we or mid-March, we will have our school name. We can go to the next slide. And this is the best way to communicate right now. We have school social media. We have Facebook and Twitter to share all the updates of the construction, um, survey information or any other um, enrollment. Uh, we'll give you all the updates on social media and you have the links there for Twitter and Facebook. And we already have a lot of people joining our social media and sending us messages as well. So if you want, you have any questions, feel free to email the school, but also you can send a message via Facebook and we will be replying to you as soon as possible. So we wanna make sure that you, any questions that you have, that you're able to share them with us and we will answer them as we have information and updates about the school. But we are very excited. We have a, a team, we're in the, in the process of hiring amazing teachers so we can have the best school in the Lake Nona community. We're getting ready for that um, as communication that I already had as well with our school board member, Ms. Johanna Lopez. Very excited about this opportunity. Know that I'm here to serve and anything you need, just follow us on social media and you can reach us there. Thank you, Lauren. And then I am going to hand it off to Chris Kowalski. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Kowalski from Rosenbrito Architects. Um, we're very happy to be here with you virtually this evening. Um, I'd like to just reintroduce you to our school. And I'd like to start with some aerial photographs. The aerial you're seeing on your screen has a red circle in the center, and that is our school site. And to help orient you to where that is into relation with some of the surrounding elementary schools, the yellow circles are Laureate Park Elementary and Eagle Creek Elementary Schools. Next slide. So this is zooming in a little bit further. Our site is shaded in red, and I wanna point out that to the west of our site is Lake Nona Boulevard, and to the south of our site is Gateway Loop. Also, I wanna point out, we have some residential areas feeding our school, and that will be Village Walk to the east and Watermark Apartments to the south. Next slide. So this is our site plan. I'd like to point out our school, first of all, and that is the tan C shape in the left portion of our site. The red asterisk is our front door. So our school is oriented towards Gateway Loop. The first thing I wanna share with you is our bus loop, and that is coming off Lake Nona Boulevard. For the left turn lane of our buses, we modified the median to include, include a turning lane. 
So buses will come off of Lake Nona Boulevard and drop off under a covered walkway. We can accommodate approximately 15 buses in the bus loop. To the left of the bus loop is our main parking area. And that entry to our main parking area is off of Gateway Loop. And much like the bus, the buses, we have a turn lane in our median to help alleviate traffic to make sure people turning onto Gateway Loop do not hinder the flow of traffic. Behind the school, I want to point out we have the youth and tot playground areas. We have a covered play area and we have some play courts. To the bottom of our school, uh, to the east of our school, we also have another drive and this is our service drive. And this is where deliveries and trash pickup will occur. And finally, I wanna point out how some of our walkers and bike riders will get to the school itself. And right where we were at the service loop, we have a sidewalk along the service drive where walkers and bike riders will come around the service drive, drop their bikes off at a bike rack and then into the school. And much like this, we have another way for those walkers coming from the north part to come along a sidewalk on Lake Nona Boulevard. And once again, come along the bus loop this time at drop off bikes at the bike racks and then into the school. I'd also point out that in the main parking lot, we have the capacity to accommodate 163 cars. So we don't anticipate once again, that there'll be any traffic backing up onto the streets. Next slide, please. So this is the first floor footprint of our school. And these are some color blocking to kind of designate some of the interior spaces. So we'll start with the bottom right hand corner in the dark blue box. This is our cafeteria and multi-purpose area. To the left of that is the administration in orange. And then further to the left of that in green is the media center. The yellow boxes you're seeing are the classrooms and instructional areas. And this school is designed to accommodate 816 students. Next slide. So this is our second floor. And you can see by the yellow color that these are all classrooms and instructional spaces. Next slide. So now I want to highlight some of the interior spaces and we'll start with the front door. Safety and security are probably our biggest concerns. And so we want to make sure we have what's called a single point of entry. And to the left, the left picture, you're seeing some double doors and what you're seeing uh, vertical to that is a single door and that is a door into our main reception area and guests and visitors will be buzzed in through this door and then into the reception area. Now the reception area has our clinic off of this. It has a main, our large conference room where meetings with the principal and guidance counselors can occur. But if there are needs for guests or visitors to go into the main school itself, they once again have to get buzzed through a locked door to get into that part of the school. And all of our other doors will be locked during the day. Um, also, I wanna point out, we have security cameras at all of the um, entry points and throughout the school. Next slide. So this is a typical classroom. Some of the highlights of our classroom are some storage cubbies at the door to the classroom. We have millwork with a sink. Throughout the, the classroom itself, we have marker boards and tack boards. And you can see our teaching wall includes an interactive flat panel screen. Also, one of the highlights of the classroom design is an audio enhancement system. So there are speakers in the ceiling and teachers can wear a microphone so that they can be heard very well throughout the whole classroom. Next slide. So this school will be state of the art and this slide is showing some of the technology we've incorporated throughout the school. The top left picture you're seeing once again, one of our classrooms 
with the interactive flat panel. The next a picture to the top right is our CCTV studio where your morning and afternoon announcements are made. And then the bottom left corner is showing you a picture of a computer lab. And finally, to the bottom right, that is showing you a picture of our media center with some of the technology we've incorporated into that. Next slide. So speaking of the media center, this is a picture of uh, our media center. There'll be a combination of soft and hard seating. The media center can accommodate two full classrooms. As you saw, there'll be technology incorporated throughout the space. Also, the audio enhancement that you heard about in the classrooms will be incorporated in this space as well. Next slide. This is our cafeteria and multi-purpose room. So you can see in the picture, we have our tables and chairs, obviously, but we also also have incorporated a raised stage for performances. We have two serving lines in the kitchen off to the side of this space. We've also have restrooms, extended day office and teacher dining. Next slide. So this is a list of some of the prototypes that we've done. And the first three are exact duplicates of our site 43 schools. The uh, schools listed below that are prototypes that are very similar, but not exact. Next slide. So, in addition to safety and security, we also uh, integrated sustainability design into the school. And this is uh, things like uh, low water plumbing fixtures, high efficiency air conditioning equipment, and we have a white reflective roof, which helps with uh, energy efficiency. Next slide. So these are some renderings of our finished product, our school. And this, you'll begin to see some of the paint colors that you're gonna find in the finished product. And if you drive by the school now, you'll, you'll actually start to see some paint going on the building. Next slide. So here's another rendering of our school. We have our, our main entrance front and center and that, that fin, that tall fin is, helps to designate the entrance for people coming from the parking lot to figure out where the front door is. To the right of our front door, we have the cafeteria and multi-purpose space. And to the left of our front door, we have the media center. And we have exterior doors to the both of these spaces so that when we have evening uh, events going on, that those spaces can be accessed directly without having to go through the school. Next slide. Now I'd like to introduce Pertle Construction. There are general contractors and they will go through some of the updates on our construction progress. Um, and actually before they get started, um, this is this is Lauren Roth, um, I'm the host and I've seen a number of questions already start to come in. I just wanna let everybody know that as soon as we see um, these photos of the construction, we will uh, begin responding. I also just wanted to uh, introduce area superintendent William Bond, who is here. And I did miss um, one of the people who's here with Pertle Construction, Jason Krakunas. Um, and so I believe, Ken, are you the one taking over now? Uh, I'll hand things over to Pertle and we will start to get to questions after this portion of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Yes, uh, I, I will be uh, starting now. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Jatin Amin. I am the project manager. and. Uh, I want to welcome you all on behalf of Portal Construction and my team. Uh, I and my team, we are physically stationed here since the start of the construction managing this project. And uh, I will now uh, briefly walk you through a, a, a quick uh, you know, schedule how we uh, got here where we are. So this project design started early 2019 and a better part of 2019, the design was fine tuned. Uh, and uh, subsequently, the first half of 2020 is when we uh, put the project out for uh, bidding and permitting was uh, uh, handled as well. We started the construction 
summer of 2020 last year and ever since uh, we are here managing this uh, project what we anticipate on uh, going forward is uh, the substantial completion of uh, may 2021 and subsequently in a month or uh, two uh, ocps uh, will be actually uh, taking over for opening the school in august of 2021 keeping in line with the normal school opening schedule next slide so here are some milestones that uh, I'd like to uh, quickly uh, go through. We received our uh, notice to proceed sometime last summer, as I said, 2020. And uh, after that, we undertook uh, the clearing of the site. And uh, in that process, we ended up importing about 115,000 cubic yards of uh, fill material to bring up the site. And we ended up uh, removing some unsuitable material as well. Uh, after that, what uh, we had to do was uh, we did the tilt wall panels, which is the exterior and uh, structural concrete walls uh, that uh, were erected. Uh, simultaneously, the structural steel uh, was uh, also uh, erected uh, following that in November. Side by side, we also did a lot of site work, which included uh, the deep drainage construction, the construction of the retention pond at the north, and uh, the waterline construction that will eventually service the school. Uh, once the structural steel work was complete, we uh, undertook the roofing work, which is just about done now. And uh, currently we are in the phase of exterior painting as well as interior finishes. Uh, we are, on, uh, are ongoing on the inside. And as I stated earlier, the project remains on schedule. We expect to turn it over this summer of 2021. So now we're gonna quickly go through some of the aerial pictures. Uh, this is the beginning of the construction process. What we see is uh, a little square uh, by the gateway loop, which is the building pad. We have, at this stage, we have already uh, completed the site clearing and now we are uh, constructing the building pad, which uh, will actually house the school in the future pictures. As you can see now in the next stage, we are doing the footings and foundations and uh, the little uh, gray strips that you see to the west and to the north are the casting slabs uh, on which we will be building the walls, uh, that uh, the concrete walls that will be erected in the next slide. As you can see now, we have done all the casting slabs. All the tilt panels uh, are already poured. The building pad is uh, complete, the slab is poured as well. And we are uh, going to now uh, do a, a lot of uh, erection in the next pictures uh, as uh, well as uh, the structural steel will follow. So this picture, as uh, I said earlier, uh, it talks about uh, the construction that, uh, you know, the tilt walls are already uh, up. The structural steel is ongoing, as you can see on the gateway loop side, the lower uh, roof has already been, the decking is on. And on the north, the open area of the structure that you see, the structural steel framing is ongoing. There are cranes, uh, they're uh, bringing the members in place. Next slide. As we can see now, the box is uh, complete, uh, the decking is done and uh, Roofing will uh, be starting in the next slide, but uh, the building is pretty much, uh, the, the, the shell is ready now to undertake all the interior work. Uh, as you can see now to the south, we have already started the deep drainage work that I talked about earlier. We have uh, uh, also started uh, the subgrade work to the west uh, for the service, uh, the bus loop entrance, as well as the parent uh, parking lot. Again, uh, in this picture, we can see that uh, the uh, parent parking lot as well as uh, the bus loop uh, subgrade is being uh, constructed. And uh, the to the south, what we were uh, seeing earlier, uh, the deep drainage and the water line and sanitary line work is already complete. Again, this is another view of uh, pretty much the same thing. As you can see now, the subgrade to the west uh, for uh, the parking lot is uh, complete. It is ready for the first layer of asphalt. 
have at this stage already completed all our deep drainage as well as uh, our sanitary and the water line construction is complete as well on the site. Next slide. So what we are seeing here in this picture, this is uh, the uh, parent loop construction as well as the parent parking construction. We have already installed the first layer of asphalt uh, on this uh, area as well as the, the survey, the bus loop. Uh, we can see that uh, the sub base is ready to receive the first layer of asphalt, what we see in the parent loop. Um, we have uh, also constructed at this stage the subgrade for the uh, play courts, as you can see to the north of the school. The covered play area is already constructed as well. So there is a lot of uh, construction on the outside has been completed at this stage. And there is a lot that is ongoing on the inside, even though we don't see it, which uh, my uh, counterpart, Ken Martinez, uh, will actually walk us through in the next few slides. So this is another picture. Uh, to the east now, what we are seeing is the construction of the service loop. Uh, which uh, will be servicing the kitchen as well as the, the trash pickup area. It will also uh, act as an entry into the uh, fire access lane that will go around the school. And uh, that is also being constructed in this picture. So at this stage now, uh, I will hand it over to uh, our site superintendent, Ken Martinez, and he will walk us through some uh, pictures uh, with some detailed uh, information. Thank you, Ken. So as Jatin had mentioned, we're, there's a lot of stuff that uh, took place to get us to the point where we're at with the project. If you look at these photos, we have a photo on the left is actually a process of removing the unsuitable materials. Um, about 450 truckloads of unsuitable material had to be removed from the job site. The picture on the right is uh, a, the starting the process of import for the new materials uh, to be brought in. Um, the building pad itself, we actually brought up an elevation around five feet. <clears throat> so here we have um, the, the tilt panels being formed on the left. Um, you can see the reinforcement that have been added into the panels. Um, these are going to actually end up forming the walls for the building. Uh, the picture to the right is a um, uh, where we're actually pouring concrete into these panels. And again, like I said, these panels are going to form the walls for the building. So here we actually have the erection for the for the for the panels. Um, like I said, these are going to become the wall uh, structure for the for the for the school. And then the picture on the right, we're installing the steel uh, structure for the uh, the roof on the uh, low roof, and we'll also have steel structure that'll go in for the second floor uh, to to assemble the second floor. Now here is the structure a little further along on the second floor on the left hand side. This is a uh, installation for the decking. Uh, to become the second floor uh, for the classroom area. And the picture to the right is um, a picture of the, the low roof area where the decking has been completed and ready to uh, receive the insulation and lightweight concrete. Um, also, as we once we get the roof onto the building, we start doing the interior uh, construction. So the picture on the left has the framing uh, one of the corridors uh, that we have um, in the building um, as well. The picture on the right, this is framing for one of the classrooms. So again, continuing on with the structure on the inside, we have a picture on the left, uh, installation for the door frames um, in, uh, in the corridors. And then also with the picture to the right, we do the insulation um, for the uh, thermal um, uh, envelope for the building, as well as the sound walls. Uh, continuing on with the interior finishes, we got drywall being installed. Um, and this was uh, here, we'll, we'll continue on with doing the, the tape and mud, finishing out the walls. Um, over to the, to the right picture, you have 
the stairs that are being installed, as well as some scaffold uh, to allow the drywall uh, to be erected uh, in the stairwells. So, as you saw earlier with the steel structure where we had the roof on, this is the next step. Um, the picture to the left, those are actual uh, foam insulation panels. And those be, are, are installed and then they get a two inch layer of lightweight insulating concrete. Um, you can see the, in, the concrete on the left. And this will actually be, form the roof for the structure. Uh, the picture here to the left, this is after we've applied the, the vinyl membrane. This is actually going to waterproof the building um, as well as seal the, the penetrations uh, for vent pipes and electrical uh, pipes that come through the roof. Um, the picture on the right, you can see the roof hatch um, that has been installed. This will give access for maintenance uh, to get to the, to the roof for uh, any, any necessary maintenance that may be required. Um, picture to the left here, we're starting the, the structure uh, for the framework at the covered play. Um, this is the steel beams being installed. Uh, picture to the right is the same structure after the roof has been installed and the drains are being connected. Uh, we'll be continuing on doing the finishing process on the outside as well. So then we have the power coming in for the building and the transformer here provided by OUC is being installed. Um, and then we have on the right hand picture, this is the main distribution panel. Uh, this provides all the power through the building and uh, for the future portables and, and anything that will be required for the site. So as Jatin mentioned earlier as well, there's a lot of work that goes on um, outside of the building that you, you may not ever see. You have the storm structures being installed with the storm line on the left-hand side of the picture there. Um, on the right-hand side, this is a installation for the water main uh, that's going to service the building. Um, another picture from uh, the the sub base that has been installed for the, the parent parking and the parent access loop. And then the picture to the right, this picture shows the asphalt being installed. Uh, this is the first layer of asphalt being installed uh, at the parent parking. So over on the east side of the building, this is a, a picture on the left is showing uh, as we are mixing the sub base uh, for the service uh, entrance, the service loop, as well as the fire access lane. And then on the north end of the pond, we are uh, the north end of the site, we have a retention pond. And here the crews are actually starting to install, install the sod around the pond uh, to help stabilize, stabilize the uh, area, prevent erosion. All right, thank you very much, Ken. I appreciate it. Um, so now we're going to open up the floor to questions. Um, Branson, if you could just go to the next slide so people can take a look at how to use the Q and A. Um, and after we give people a, a moment to read this, if you could please go to the uh, the site plan because we've gotten a number of questions on the uh, connection between Village Walk and the school. Um, Rob, I know you've been answering a number of those. Do you mind unmuting and just kind of explaining the situation there? Yeah, no problem. Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, the issue there is we have met with Village Walk about that gate access, and we are putting in a sidewalk connection. Uh, but Village Walk has, um, not stated whether or not they're going to allow their uh, people to go through that gate. So it's really out of OCPS's control. So it is recommended if you are a resident in there that you get with the homeowners association and try to push for that access because we definitely want it. 
Hey, Rob, um, we actually do have a couple of the members of that panel on this call here tonight. Um, I believe the chair, Rafael Arvalo, is on the call, and uh, Julie, who's on that, uh, the Village Walk group. So I just wanted to, to have you pause for just a second. And Rafael, um, if you would like to, you know, add to this, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and, and uh, chime in. Okay, it looks like Raphael has done so, so let's give him a minute. Uh, hello, everyone. Good night. Um, Hi, we can hear you, Raphael, but not real well. Can you get closer to your microphone, please? Yes. By now? A little bit better. Okay. Um, good, better. Good night. Good night, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafael Arevalo. I am working with the HOA. I am the chairman of the committee to evaluate to open the gate access from Village Walk, um, the school. Um, we have a few ideas, but we need to know more uh, the plan on your side. If you can share a little bit more, would be good. Um, the few, the most important question would be like, uh, um, who is going to be control the gate if we are allowed to, 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 to build access from, from, from both sides. And the second question will be a very important one. Who will be responsible for um, how the, the build the, 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 the gate? I mean, to pay the gate, to build everything. Um, the other thing would be who will be in charge um, to provide us uh, like a crossing guard or life or signs on, on our side to control the traffic uh, in village walk and to, to make safe uh, the kids cross uh, the street and get access to the school. And the last question, very important too, um, what happens if the parents choose um, bike and walk from village walk, but a raining day they will have the alternative to pick up the kids um, by car. Thank you so much. I mean, I think uh, we have more members here. Uh, maybe we can allow to speak themselves too. Thank you. Okay, um, Rob, can you just grab the parts of that that you can address and then we'll address the other parts? Yeah, let me address that. And also there's another question uh, in the Q&A that I will address that's somewhat related to this. Uh, as far as who will build the gate, there is an existing gate there. Um, it is not in very good shape. And we, when we did meet with uh, Village Walk, they did say that they would potentially upgrade that gate. Um, OCPS would not be spending public dollars to upgrade a gate for a village walk. You know, that's something that we cannot do. We just do our side, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, we can only spend public dollars, you know, on our property. Um, as far as opening and closing the gate at village walk, that would have to be a uh, village walk. Somebody would have to be responsible. And I believe right now the gate has a lock that has some kind of code on there. Um, so that could be a potential option, but opening and closing of the gate would have to be uh, the responsibility of village walk. Um, as far as a control of traffic in village walk, uh, that would also have to be village walks responsibility. Um, OCPS wouldn't be responsible, you know, for controlling traffic inside uh, that development. Now, there was another question in the Q and A related to access from the gate to the school and the location of the service drive. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on this drawing because it is pretty small. I don't know if we could potentially uh, zoom in. Yeah, Branson, there is, if you could zoom in, um, it, it does allow you to do that. Because the sidewalk from that gate does not cross uh, the service drive. So you are able to come through that gate, get right to the bike racks, and walk right into the school without crossing any driveway. 
Hey, hey Robert, yeah, go ahead, Christopher. Robert, just just to be clear, the the gate and the and that wall are are entirely on Village Walk property. Um, yes. So we we have zero control over that. I mean, we're trying to make we'll make the connection as close as we can on our side, but there's still a gap between the property line and the gate, as well as the gate, you know, on the other side of uh, on the Village Walk side. So that that connection has to be made by the the HOA. We will make the connection uh, to the edge of our property line. Okay. Yeah, and we have met with uh, Village Walk and made that clear to them as to what their uh, requirements would be. Uh, but like I said before, we can only spend our taxpayer dollars on our site. Right, and now there, there's a question about a crossing guard there. And I'm struggling a little bit with where exactly that would be. I don't know if Christopher or Rob, you could help with that. Yeah, we will have crossing guards, uh, but not at that gate, the crossing guards currently are planned for Lake Nona Boulevard. And right now they're planning to have, I believe four, which would be two at the lower gateway loop entrance, and then two down by the uh, village walk entrance. But one thing the city is working to do is extending a sidewalk from the village walk exit to the new sidewalk that we are installing along Lake Dona Boulevard. Okay, and there was also some questions uh, about the construction on Lake Nona Boulevard. Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, we have been working with the county and city on the Lake Nona Boulevard construction work. We actually started our work for our turn lane and median cut this week. Um, so we've started uh, with relocating some of the trees and disconnecting the power for the light poles. So that work is going to go on for about the next month or month and a half or two. And then the city is going to come back and finish their paving. And then the Lake Nona Boulevard will be uh, complete. In discussions with them, we are expecting the Lake Nona Boulevard work uh in the vicinity of our campus to be completed by the start of school okay and um adam there was a question about how buses would navigate traffic um it certainly sounds like lake nona boulevard will be complete before the school opens but if if that construction were to continue are there any general words you could share about how bus drivers handle you know transitory traffic and um construction situations well, we handle that in a lot of different areas, uh, construction. We have to drive carefully, slow down as needed. Okay. Um, so in terms of the, there were a number of questions about this gate access. Um, you know, I, I think it's been addressed um, that we are going to put a connection on our side. Um, if, if we didn't answer, you know, your question on that, if you could, um, you know, put that in there, um, cause I, I, there were a number of questions that were very similar and I think we've addressed them, but if we didn't, please ask a new one. Um, there was a question. Are we going to have ESE ASD classrooms for kids who are zoned to the new school? Um, Mr. Bond, is that something you could answer? I don't know if that's something Dr. Vasquez would have the answer to at this point. Um, if one of you could, could help me out if you happen to know. Not at this time, not at this time. We did definitely will follow up, uh, with that question. I take a note on the question, um, because we got to also look at the amount of students that will be, uh, coming to the school as well. So we'll definitely follow up on that one. Thank you very much. And that was the area superintendent responding to that. Um, Adam, if you could explain how transportation is going to be determined, there's a question. Do we know yet if the Enclave community will be eligible? Can you explain not only the timeline uh, of busing, but how, how that works? Okay, uh, I'm muted. I'm trying to get the video back up. Uh, so, it's, it's basically the two mile from the nearest pedestrian entrance to of the school to 
the point at which private property meets public right of way, we measure along walk paths, whether or not they're available for uh, vehicle traffic, it's measured on walk paths. Uh, as far as the routes are determined, I had a, the most recent date here. Um, bus routes are finalized for school board approval at the end of July. Okay, so by the end of July, people should know if they're getting a bus or not? Correct. Okay, uh, there's a question, where will the school crosswalks be installed, specifically on Lake Nona Boulevard? And what types of crosswalks will they be? I think the question is, you know, whether there's going to be, uh, you know, flashers or anything with it. Um, I don't know if Christopher or Rob, you can help with that. I also know we have Yolanda Ortiz with the city. Also, I don't know if, if she wants to chime in. Rob or Chris, could you help? I think you're both muted. Oh, Christopher. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Christopher, is that something you could help me out with? Or do we know where those crosswalks are going to be at this point? I don't have an answer for that. Sorry. Okay. Um, Orin, would you like me to chime in? Yes, please. Anybody who knows where the crosswalks are. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Good evening. This is Jay. As I far as Lake Nona Boulevard goes, there are no crosswalks going across Lake Nona Boulevard. There's not any currently, and as far as we know, the city is not encouraging that type of a pedestrian movement. What we are doing is putting in our sidewalks around our perimeters. Um, I will say too that uh, in and around this area, the residential areas are all on the school's side of the road, uh, as opposed to the opposite side of the road. Um, there are some crosswalks around the loop that are adjacent to the school, and those are either currently in place or will be restriped as part of the work effort that we're doing within Upper Gateway and Lower Gateway Loop. But those are the only uh, crosswalks that are currently there. As far as the question on the signal, I've not heard of any discussion whatsoever related to a traffic signal near this intersection. Okay, so Jay, if I'm understanding this correctly, the intent is not for students to be crossing Lake Nona Boulevard on foot. Um, Correct. And Adam, if that's the case, you know, if a, a student would be coming from across Lake Nona, Nona Boulevard, would that potentially be considered in the busing pattern? Well, I thought there were going to be crossing guards crossing Lake Nona Boulevard. I thought that was what we just discussed, right? There are no crosswalks across Lake Nona Boulevard as part of our plan. And yeah, the crosswalks are elsewhere. Right. So, so there are no crossing guards at all on Lake Nona Boulevard uh, for anybody that would be coming from the other side. Correct. Um, Brandon, uh, can you zoom in on Upper Gateway Loop so we can show the crosswalks that are there so people can see where they are? Okay, so that's, that's where the crosswalks are. At the end of the day, though, just so we're clear, that would be a decision. If they were going to be added, that would be a decision that would be um, made by the city. Okay. So basically, the answer I could provide now is it would have to meet the uh, criteria in Statute 1006.23 to determine whether or not it um, met hazardous criteria. If it did, we would uh, provide the busing. If it doesn't, then we wouldn't be able to. Okay, so Adam, just for people who haven't heard of that before, um, if there's a hazardous walking condition for a student, that could allow for busing from closer than two miles. Right, okay. if, it met, if it met the statutory criteria, correct. Right, um, and we have a question about Canvas and Launchpad. Um, I think we can 100% say that this school will be one-to-one -one with digital devices when it opens, so yes. Um, I don't know, Dr. Vasquez, if you want to add anything about that or Mr. Bond. Can you repeat the question again, um, Ms. Um, sure, sure. The question was um, whether the new school would have access to Canvas and Launchpad, and I just had mentioned that the school be one to one. Yes, the school is um, is going to be a digital school, and every child will have their own device, and we will continue using the platforms provided by OCPS. 
which at this point is Canvas, and um, we'll do our. I mean, we don't know yet how the modality is going to be next year. We're going to continue with both modalities of virtual and uh, face to face. But if we do go, um, if if we do it this way, the kids will continue the same programs that they're doing right now. If we are face to face, one hundred percent. Every child will have their device and they will have access to whatever platform is provided by the district, which at this time is canvas canvas. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and there was a question that more specifically was mentioning that enclave is the neighborhood on the opposite side of the road. Rob, do you happen to know which position it's in? Because there, there was a question about how they would access the school, but I'm not familiar with where enclave is specifically. Yeah, I am not familiar with where that is either. Okay, um, Julie, could you just send a message indicating what street they're opposite? Um, and, and then we'll look at it on the map. Um, do we have a sense of how many kids will be enrolled from Village Walk and Enclave? That's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, Dr. Voss, question to Mr. Bond is are our, uh, do we have that specific information yet? The question was, um, do we know how many kids would specifically be coming from Village Walk or Enclave? We do have those numbers, but I don't have them right in front of me right now, but I can share them with you and you can share with the committee later on. Sure. Yeah. And um, so, you know, Principal Vasquez has joined the school now. So, um, you know, going forward, you'll also have have that contact as she starts to staff up the school. So, um, okay, so Ms. DeMuthio De did share that Enclave is on Lake Nona Boulevard, the opposite side closer to Narcusi. Um, I don't know that our map shows that. Could we go back one map further out to see if we can see that? The aerial might show it. The nine, yeah, slide nine. Okay, there's like Nona Boulevard. I'm not sure. Um, so if we're not able to, I will put my email address in the chat before we close. And so for any questions that we're not able to answer tonight, just email me and I will get you an answer tomorrow. I'm sorry that we're not able to answer all of those today. But if it's a hazardous walking condition, there would be uh, bus eligibility. If there isn't, there should be a crosswalk. Is, is that a fair way to kind of explain it, Adam? Well, we're, if there are students that are gonna be crossing like on a boulevard, then we would be working with the city uh, to kind of have crosswalks and spell that are evaluated for crossing guards uh, in an ideal setting. We don't want them to put that in. Looking at the map, you know, it could be if there's any living neighborhoods was over. I'm, I'm was having a hard time with the audio. Oh, okay. You're just kind of fuzzy. Like, I don't know if there's, uh, if there's some background noise. Uh, here, there's nobody else here. Okay. All right. Go ahead. If you could try that again, Adam. Okay. Uh, like I was explaining, uh, we would work with the city. If there were students that were under two miles that would be likely to be walking, we would try to work with the city to see if um, there could be plans for crosswalks to be put in and evaluated for crossing guards. Um, okay. If they could meet the criteria uh, and that, you know, we weren't able to have crosswalks, crossing guards, and it met hazardous criteria and they were under two miles, they would be eligible for busing. Okay, and th there have been a number of folks who, thank you very much, have um, put some clarification in the messages. So um, they've explained that uh, Village Walk and Enclave are overseen by the same HOA. The uh, entrance to Enclave is a 2.05 miles from the school. So we'd have to see, you know, how that lines up with the uh, walking entrance to the school. And it's on the other side of Lake Nona Boulevard. Um, Raphael, you can just unmute yourself. Uh, hello everyone. I mean, uh, again. Um, come on, come on like, closer to the mic, Rafael. We're not yeah. hearing you well. I would like to be. I, I would like to get a, a specific answer. It's very simple. 
in the case village work build or accommodate the the access from from the from the community to the school the school is going to have a gate on this on the uh, i mean it, the school is going to have a gate who will be control the school gate thank you okay um rob i think we need a little clarification will there be two gates or just the one that Village Walk has? Are we putting a gate on our property side as well, or are we just building a sidewalk up to their existing gate? It's my understanding we are just building a sidewalk up to their gate location. It isn't, uh, I do not believe there's a secondary gate. Okay. So just to clarify, the only gate is the existing village walk gate. We're not building a gate. Um, we're just building a sidewalk to the gate. Well, that, let's let's be clear that there, the gate, the existing gate is on village walk property. There's probably you know ten feet from our property line to that gate. Thank you for clarifying. I'm sorry. Okay, so so, so we gonna, we were going to secure our. I mean, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. The, uh, we're going to have a, a fence around our our property. We're going to secure our site, and and I assume that we would have a a gate on on that fence as well. So, two gates. Uh, now, if you look at the drawing yeah. here, you can kind of see. I know it's kind of tough to see, but you can see where our perimeter fence um jogs up to where the fire access lane is the dash line to the future portable expansion area that's our perimeter fence okay. so anything to the okay. left of that is not fenced okay uh, obviously with the, the exception of the bike rack we do put a fence around the bike rack okay so that's an open area of the campus right along the, uh, to the right of the service drive Yes. And um, so we're going to build the sidewalk to the edge of our property, but there's a gap between our property and the uh, gate. Chris Kowalski, are you trying to say something? Yeah, I, I was just about to say something along with what you were saying. Our sidewalk will go up to our property line. Now, our property line does not abut the wall. There is a space of approximately 10 feet between our property line and the wall. So that is also village walk property. Yes, and um, Julie, Julie just put in a message, village walk would have to build the walkway to your walkway. That's exactly okay. right. And yes. the gate is on village walk property. So Rafael, we would not be controlling it. It's on your property. Correct. It is, so it would be village walks, you know, your choice how to handle that gate. That's not well, something the after, school will be after, controlling. After the 10 feet, it's going to have a gate, correct? Rafael, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can you? Uh, after the 10 feet, it's going to be a, a gate from the school or only a fence? No, neither. So your gate, there's a space of about 10 feet until our property starts. And at the edge of our property, there will be a sidewalk, and that sidewalk will lead up um branson can you kind of uh kind of draw um a line along the um um along that little bit of sidewalk that leads from village walk to the bike racks there yeah there we go Thank you very much. Okay, so that is an open section um, that doesn't have a gate ar around a uh, fence around it because our fence goes a little further in, and so that will be an open sidewalk that we're building. And then there's a gap of about ten feet that you guys would need to add a sidewalk or a path, and then your existing gate. So we would not control your existing gate. Village Walk would control that gate. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I know it's confusing. Um, are there any additional questions? And let me ask my uh, other panelists. I know there were a lot of questions that came in, um, and I think a lot of them were about that walkway. So um, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything else. I'm going to take another quick glance through 
to see if I've missed anything else. And uh, if any of the other uh, panelists have anything that I missed, if you could jump in on that. Okay, and um, Dr. Vasquez um, did indicate um, that the school email address, um, I'm gonna, actually Dr. Vasquez, can you copy and paste that into the chat to all the attendees too? Um, I don't think they can all see the Q&A. Got it. Yeah, so um, watch, the, um, watch the chat for the school email address. And I'm also going to um, put my email address in the chat also. So if it's not really a school specific question, but more of a, a facilities question, I can get you the answer. Sorry about the typing noise. Um, all right, if you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in. Um, otherwise, um, Johanna, uh, is, were there any closing remarks you wanted to have while we give uh, everybody a chance to ask any final questions? I just wanna I just wanna say that we are very excited. Every school in Lake Nona is outstanding. Um, the parental engagement is huge. Um, principals, teachers, students, all of them are great. So I know that we're gonna have a great experience with this new school. So we are very excited, and we're also very proud to have um, Dr. Vasquez as well as a principal in Lake Nona. She already has the relationship with other principals. She's in the in the community, trying to know the community, um, identifying partnerships. So it's very important that if you want to support the school and 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 have um and and have uh, and want a relationship with this new school, just contact um Dr. Um Vasquez. So thank you so much for coming tonight and it's it's great. It's great. I'm very excited. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have had a few more questions come in. So, um, and someone did comment that there is a crosswalk across Lake Nona Boulevard at Enclave. So it sounds like our transportation folks and um, our planning folks just need to take a look at that um, and, and figure out how we're going to handle um, that particular part of the neighborhood. Um, there was a question about will the school gate be open and closed only during school hours? That's something that you'll need to discuss with Village Walk because the gate is on Village Walk property. Um, there was also a question, why doesn't the school build the gate on their property and extend the fence to the existing Village Walk wall? That's because we can't build things not on our property. Um, so we do have um, a fence on our property and we have a sidewalk on our property to the edge of the property. Um, there are also some questions that I believe would be for Dr. Vasquez. Um, asking whether there'll be a gifted program, whether there'll be before and after care. I don't know if you want to um, just have people email you with questions like that. Yeah, of course I can email me, but I can answer them real quick. Uh, sure. We will have an extended day program um, of our own and it will be in the mornings from seven, starting at 7 a.m. And then we will have the after school program until 6 p.m. in the afternoons, of course. And about gifted program, yes, we will be having gifted program. It, the, mo the model will depend on the amount of kids that we have that on the gifted program, but we will be providing that service as well to our students. Okay, and there's a question about the zone for the school. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what communities are included? That is something that's public information. You can just look at the map. Um, if you go onto uh, the OCPS website, you can either click on enrollment um, and then school rezonings and then board approved rezonings and then you'll drop out elementary schools and under there um, you can actually see the map. And um, Dr. Vasquez, do you mind maybe um, on the school social media also putting that link there also because it sounds like there's some interest in looking at, at what that map looks like? Absolutely. Okay, so you can also just, if it's a little easier, just go to um, the schools, I'm sorry, is it Facebook you have? We have Facebook and we have Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. Um, so you can check those out. You can also email um, Principal Vasquez. I did put her email address in the chat or you can email me, um, lauren.roth at ocps.net if you can't find it and I'll send you the link. Um, I think- Hey Lauren, mm -hmm. Lauren this is Jessma. Uh, I, I wanna make sure that the email address for the school that is correct because the school um, number is 43 ESE2. 
but it's typed the email address reads 43 S E E two. I want to make sure that you didn't hmm. the numbers were not transposed or anything. S E two. Yeah, yeah the, the school ID number is 43 E S E two. And you have 43 S E E two. I just want to make sure that that's I'm double. I'm double checking on the system just to make sure that we have the right email and I'll put okay. it. If, if it needs to be corrected, I'll put the correct 1. I'm looking right now. Okay. Okay. And Dr. Voss, yeah. not to pile on, but there's 1 more question about hiring. Um, if someone's interested in, you know, uh, a position at the school, what should they do? So, right now, we are in the early hiring process, but it's only for um, OCPS employees that are annual or PSC. Later on in April, we will be um, offering opportunities for out of county um, candidates. But at this moment, we are receiving, you know, we're receiving all types of resumes right now. You can send them to me directly. And, uh, but right now we're interviewing um, teachers from within OCPS and or feeder schools. And then um, in April, we'll start uh, opening up the opportunities for um, teachers that are out of the county. Okay, terrific. Now I will be sending a follow up email tomorrow that has a link to this video. And so uh, if that email address needs to be changed or there's a different version of it, um, I can certainly send that out with a follow up email. Um, so don't worry about that. I'll get you the right email either way. I'm so, writing it right now, um, Lauren. Yes, it is 443E. They put it the email ESE. So I'm going to fix it right now and put it there in the chat. Okay. So it's 43 dash E dash SE dash two underscore ES. Yes. At OCPS.net. That is correct. Right. Okay. For anyone who's not able to see the chat and is just listening. Okay. Is there anything that any of the other panelists wanted to add? Okay. I'm going to give it just a minute for the uh, email to populate in the chat for. Everyone, there it is. So 43-E-SE-2-ES at OCPS.net. And please do go vote in that survey, the naming survey, because then there will be an email address with the school name and it will be so much easier. I guarantee yes. you. Much. <laughs> so help name the school and then there will be an easier email address <laughs> in a month or so. Okay, so thank you so much to everybody for participating and uh, have a wonderful night. Thank, thank you for being part of this school. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.